Elon. Elon's a fucking wizard, man. Yeah. I'm really interested to see what he does with Twitter because he bought 9% of Twitter. Oh, that's right. I read an article today, though. I didn't read the article, excuse me. I read a headline today that said that uh, he might have done something illegal by buying that stock. Oh, really? Yeah, but like, but what is that? What could he have done? I don't understand that. What um, what but was his... I wasn't his, interested enough to read the What article. was his motivation for that? the disclosure of the purchase. <clears throat> the disclosure of the purchase? That he disclosed it? That's what it's... it's the timing being... of the disclosure, it says. Oh. I think, you know, when, that you, when you make a giant purchase like that, not disclosing it in a certain amount of time can affect things. Oh, so like wait, affect like how other people buy it? Sure. Mm, or right. sell it or do whatever they right. do. Right, affect mm -hmm. the stock price. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm interested to see because uh, I hear they're going to put an edit button now. Because that was one of the things that he suggested, and he made a poll. Do you think Twitter should have an edit button? And he said yes. Who edits what? You, whether you can edit it. Like if you write something and you write 1945, but you meant 1965. Like, fuck. You have to delete the tweet and start all over again. And he wants the, he was like, made a poll, should Twitter have an edit button? And yeah. the vast majority of people said yes, so let's see if they implement that. Here's oh, the law. I see. Okay. It's a 50-year-old law that requires that investors notify the Securities and Exchange Commission when they surpass a 5% stake in a company. Musk reached that benchmark on March 14th, according to the filings, but he made his public disclosure only Monday. That in sounds between, like a stock minor. Yeah, in between, he continued to buy stock at the price of around $39 per share, bringing his total stake to 9.2%. After his disclosure, Twitter's share price rose roughly 30% and is now above $50 per no share. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. So mm. basically, if he had disclosed earlier that he was buying it, the price would have ri risen, risen faster. Yes. Got and it. Maybe that would have been bad for him because he wouldn't be able to get it at the same rate. Yeah, exactly. But if he, if he's actually listened to, so I don't know like how much power a person who's worth nine percent has over a company. Well, he's the biggest uh, yeah. owner, right? Yeah. The biggest stakeholder, shareholder. But if he, did they have to listen to him though? You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. do do they have to listen to him in terms of like? whether they want to ban people, whether they want to have an edit button, whether or not they want to apply the principles of the First Amendment to something like Twitter. Right. Well, maybe it's the, it's the fear that if he were to dump all the stock, it would hurt the price, so they want to keep him happy. I was having a conversation with uh, a couple friends yesterday about this, and one of them was dealing with uh, comments on uh, another social media platform. And what they were saying was that, you know, what Twitter does by banning people and censoring people is definitely bad, but there are some fucking horrible people that were banned by Twitter that are now ruining these other social media apps. And they were explaining to me like what's happening and how these people comment on these other apps and about how toxic they are and about they have like a whole group of people that have also been banned that find these new social media apps and that's that's where they congregate and hang out and that's their community now and it's just blah, it's just Chernobyl it's just toxic. What are the other apps? Well, there's a shitload of them. I don't want to name the but one that like this person was talking to me about. Okay specifically because I don't want to fuck up because I, I think I believe in these other apps I, I believe in all these other alternative platforms and I think that there's great value in having competitors whether it's to Twitter or to YouTube or to any of these Facebook any of these giant huge companies that have a massive pipeline to the consciousness of the world because the what the ability to distribute information on Twitter or on Facebook or like th that is unprecedented. There's never been a thing like that mm. where a privately owned company has the ability to get ideas out there that can change the way elections are run, to change the way uh, so many things are thought of in this country. I think we need alternatives, and I think we need alternatives that adhere to free speech. But the problem is when they've got these shitty people that they've kicked off of these other platforms like Twitter, because Twitter is pretty ruthless about it, 
then they go to these other places and they run amok. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, hey, free speech, you need free speech. But then there's, they're organizing harassment campaigns and fucking with people and targeting them all day long and constantly commenting on them. And mm-hmm. you're like, I don't know if that's good either. Yeah. You know, that would make me not want to go there if I, that was, I was this person. So like, but I don't like what Twitter did. Like, I don't think Twitter should have banned Trump. I don't think I think that was t- a terrible idea. It's a terrible precedent to set that you you can decide that you don't like a guy who's the fucking sitting president of the United States at the time mm-hmm. and kick him off your platform because you don't like the the things he's saying. Mm. 